Yeah, so you know, all of us are a little bit different. There's so many physical therapists and chiropractors and osteopathic physicians out there, and we're all a little bit different. There's a lot of similarities. And so there's really three main areas that we all want to approach really any patient with. Um, we want to evaluate them, you know, give them a full thorough evaluation to find out because you might have hip osteoarthritis, but that you could also have other um, you know, dysfunctions around your lower back, your knee, that, that play a role in that person's individual care of the plan. Uh, so after the evaluation, we'll kind of sit down with the patient and let them know, you know, what impairments we found, what's, what's moving too much, what's not moving enough, what's tight, what's weak. Um, and so we want to teach them exercises, very specific exercises. But if the person is very stiff and can't move, what good is strengthening something that can't move, right? So we want to start oftentimes with manual therapy, you know, and so every patient's a little bit different. Some patients need a lot of manual therapy and then we progress into exercise while others don't need any manual therapy and they're ready for exercise right away. And again, that has to do with the severity of the hip osteoarthritis. So someone comes in, we find that they have a stiffening joint capsule around that hip joint. There are a dozen or more hands-on techniques that we can do. So physical therapists and chiropractors will do joint manipulations and mobilizations. And you know, if you go to the website, you'll see some of these uh, videos either on the website or on the YouTube channel, uh, the HipTrack YouTube channel. And you can see some demonstrations of these techniques. But some of them are very relaxing, very gentle, very pain relieving. They're all very safe. Other ones are a little bit less comfortable. And so sometimes we have to stretch that joint that's already irritated and it's safe um, and the person will feel better later, but it's sort of like uh, flossing your teeth for the first time, right? If you haven't flossed and you begin to floss, you, you know, we expect our gums to bleed a little bit and be a little irritated, but if we're consistent with that flossing, the gums will stop bleeding, the tissue remodels, and then that you have healthier tissue after that. So you have to really educate patients about this process because we are going to do some techniques that are uncomfortable, but if you remind them of that, and then once they start seeing that improve, then there's, you know, they, they really like it. So we'll do a, a, a number of hands-on techniques to really work on stretching out that joint capsule to take the pressure off the hip, get their mobility to start to improve, then we'll transition into some of these exercises. Um, the exercise will range from very small movements, you know, lying on your bed, lying on the floor, and you slowly want to progress that person over weeks and months to tolerate more weight-bearing exercise. You know, weight-bearing exercise are important because that's our position to function. We don't usually walk or work or, you know, live lying on our backs the whole time. We need to be able to go up and down stairs, squat, pick up our children, pick up our grandchildren, you know, sit down in a chair at the restaurant, some of the simplest functions. And so you really want to, you know, you, you begin non-weight-bearing and you progress to more functional weight-bearing exercise again, depending on the uh, severity of the arthritis. And then education. So the patient education could be what positions to sleep in, how should you be driving, how often should you get up from your computer during the day, how much water should you drink, what supplements you know, should you be taking, if any, you know, nutritional information, uh, just that type of stuff. So if you combine that patient education with that manual therapy and the corrective and therapeutic exercise, that's your best chance. Well, really that's your only chance of trying to improve your functionality and quality of life while you're waiting for that hip replacement surgery. Uh, we know that the arthritis will progress. We cannot stop that. We cannot stop aging. That person will get a hip replacement, you know, as, as long as they live long enough, depending on the person. Uh, so it's just so important to keep that human being as happy as possible, as functional as possible, and keep them moving while they're in that natural delay that the surgeon or the, their arthritis has put them on.